Welcome to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. Last time we saw Rocky Bot Boa take out the back. Today, we're going to see the return of three bots from last year. Conquering Clown with a new makeover. The Brood, who's up for some revenge on Matilda. And Unibite, with a brand new weapons package, ready to dish out some destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Master of Mayhem, Mick Foley. Welcome to Robot Wars, Extreme Warriors. Many battles have been fought, but the war is still far from over. Two finalists have already clawed their way to the top over the motionless bodies of their opponents, winning the chance to battle the best of the best in the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors Championship tonight. Six more robots roll into the arena, but only one rolls out. Can you say bot butt whooping? I thought you could. Let's go to Carol in the pits for the real deal. Thanks, Mick. Hi, I'm Carol Grove. Wow, the heat is on down here in the pits, and so is the armor, because that's what our robots are going to need when they go up against their competitors and the house bots. Their ultimate goal is to secure one of the eight spots in the U.S. Championship. And every team here tonight is only five battles away from robot glory. All right, Carol. And those six bots are Texas Tornado, Black Widow, and Unibite 2. But first up, we're going to see the return of Conquering Clown 2, The Brute, and Sir Porcelot. Conquering Clown 2, it's nice to have you back. You guys did awesome last year, and you're back with a vengeance. What's your strategy? Well, we come back stronger and better, and we've got a secret weapon up there. Why don't you tell me about that secret weapon? Well, that's our butterfly. That'll just bug them so much they won't know which way to go. It looks fierce when I walked up. Yeah, well, it's almost as bad as our blade here. Tell me about the blade. The blade is uh, solid steel, and it rotates probably 10,000 RPMs. Okay. It started out as a car starter, but now it's a robot stopper. So do you think you'll come away with the championship this year? Yeah, we didn't make it last year, but we're going to do it this year. Okay, well, I'll be looking for you. Good luck. <laughs> Team Vicious, you guys have Brute. Tell me about Brute and what's going to make it better than last series. Uh, well, we've upgraded a bit from last series. We have a nice 23-pound uh, spinning drum on the front. It goes at about 1,000 RPM. Uh, we have hardened axles this time and uh, some better foam fill tires. Shouldn't have the problems we had last year. Otherwise, it's about the same. What other weapon do you have uh, on We there? have a nasty spike on the back, which uh, served us well last time. Nasty spike. Do you have any words for your opposition today? I'll just say this. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Team Force, welcome to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Tell me about your machine. Okay, this is Sir Forcelot. We have five S7 tool steel blades here spinning at 2,000 RPM. They can uh, rotate in both directions. Excellent. What do you have to say to your opposition? When I was a kid, I was afraid of clowns. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm going to send them to clown heaven. From Redondo Beach, California, Root. Brute in the 215 pounds has a 7-inch ramming spike on the back that looks like it'll do some damage. And if that isn't good enough, the drum on the front ought to kill him. From Eden, New York, Sir Forcelot. Well, there's Sir Forcelot, 220 pounds, five spinning blades off a camshaft from hell. It's invertible, but the armor isn't really too much to talk about. From Silvis, Illinois, Conquering Clown. And the comedy entrant, Conquering Clown at 198 pounds. He burned up real good last year, but this year he's coming back with a steel blade and payback in his mind. Roboteer, stand by. There's the Sir Forcelot team, Team Force. And Sir Forcelot there. There's Team's Conquering Clown and Team Vicious for Brute. 
And there is Brute with that mean spike. And Conquering Clown, ready to do battle. And joining us tonight in the arena will be Sir Killalot and his 616 pounds. And with him, the Diamond Edge Axe of Shunt at 240 pounds. Three, two, one, activate. Here we go. Conquering Clown's got a lot to prove this time. He's got that new spinning blade. Let's see if... Oh, he does get some action with it. Takes out a side panel of Sir Force a lot. Look at that. Totally disintegrating him. Just on impact. Well, Conquering Clown may actually do some conquering this time as the Brute tries to step into the action. But that spinning drum doesn't seem to be doing too much damage up against the Clown. Oh! And Sir Porcelot comes in with a five blades and takes a little chunk out of the Clown. The Clown is getting a beating out there as usual. That steel prop of theirs is getting bent up like some kind of weird pitch on a helicopter. Conquering Clown better do something as Brute and Sir Forcelot go head up and the Clown gets in the middle of them. The little Brute doesn't seem to be too effective with that spinning drum on the front. They might be a whole lot better off backing in with that spike. Look at the damage on Conquering Clown. Well, he's not on fire yet as the pit trigger gets opened by the Brute. That's a good bit of strategy for them since their weaponry doesn't seem to be too effective. And now the Clown pushes Sir Force a lot right back into the corner patrol zone and Sean is going to let him know he doesn't belong there. And that's a good piece of strategy on the Conquering Clown's part to let the house bots do all the work. As you know, that corner patrol zone's a no-go area for any of these bots. They wander in there, they're going to feel the wrath of Sean or kill a lot. <laughs> Better do like just what he's doing. Get out of that corner. As the 10-second clock goes down, they're all still working, so this is going to have to go to a judge's decision. Cease. There are our esteemed judges who will be deciding on style, damage, control, and aggression. And while they're making up their minds, let's take a look at some of the damage. Conquering Clown went right out of the blocks to do some mean damage to Sir Forcelot. Now, if I looked at that again, I'd think Sir Forcelot or the Brute would be the ones going out, because they were dishing out the least amount of damage. All right, it was too close to call in my book, but that's what we got judges for. And unfortunately, one of these teams has got to go. And uh, gentlemen, that team is you. You guys are on your way out of the tournament. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, we built it in five days, you know, so. Yeah. Built it in five days, but still, nonetheless, you were able to literally spray clown guts all over the arena. Right, guys, right. Ah, if you beep that horn again, I swear I'll smack you. I I'm going to be honest here. I don't like clowns. They scare me. I don't feel safe when you guys are around. And I wish these guys were still in the tournament instead of you. But nonetheless, you did a good job out there. We came here to tear them up, so we did. Okay. And now you guys look very impressive. Look very impressive. You got the rotor going. Looked like it was tearing up some uh, some carcasses out there. Yes, it was. Uh, we hope to do more of that. And uh, I sympathize with the guys because I know about building robots quickly like that. But I have to throw this in just because it's too great. Built in five days, destroyed in five minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Hey, you guys want to do me a favor? Take out these clowns. I want the clown to go down. Well, let's hear it for all these teams up here on Robot Wars. Sir Forcelot, what happened? Oh, we took some uh, good hits from the clown over there and uh, broke our, uh, what I thought was Lexan, I think turned out to be acrylic sides here. This shattered it, so it made for good TV, though, I think. Do you think it's repairable? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get it back together. Okay, back together. well, good luck in the future. Thank you. Sometimes the losers are scattered all over the arena floor, and sometimes the judges have to make the call. This time, they called Sir Forcelot's bluff, sending Brute and the Conquering Clowns on to round two. We will have the battle to determine who they'll take on when we come back. Stick around.
Yeah, well, thank you, and welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Surf Force a lot, lost a lot, sending Brute and the Conquering Clown into round two. Our next three contenders are ready to reduce each other to metal shavings. Let's go to the battle board and find out who they are. All right, Mick, we're going to see Black Widow up against Unibite 2 and Texas Tornado. I heard there's a Texas tornado around here. Yeah, right? yeah, right here. Well, you guys look like you're Texas in your pad. Tell me about your machine. Our machine is called the Texas Tornado. We've got a lifting arm in front that can lift 200 pounds. Wow. We've got a steel spike coming out 24 inches from the rear with two side spikes, and we've got ramps all around the sides of the robot. How fast does the Texas Tornado go? Uh, we'll go about seven miles an hour. So you don't have any fear of the Black Widow or the Unibite 2? No, we think we're faster than both of them. You do? Yeah. Do you have any fighting words for them? Don't, don't mess, mess with Texas! Texas. So you call your machine the Black Widow. Is that your name as well? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about the Black Widow. Okay, the Black Widow has two milling cutters that spin at about 750 RPM. We got a steel um, wedge in the front to protect us. Okay. Um, we're made out of Lexan, 14 inch tires, makes me invertible. Great. And we got a nice spike on the back. Well, congratulations on being the one and only female driver. Very proud of that. Thank you. And good <laughs> luck. Thank you. I'm here with Team Duct Tape with the Unibite 2. Why do you call yourselves Team Duct Tape? Because we use the duct tape exclusively in the robot for fastening material. As you can see right here, we have a lot of duct tape down components. So it's not pretty, but it works. Yeah, it works pretty good. This looks like a pretty mean part. What's this do? Is this your weapon? Yeah, this is the main weapon on the front here. It's a spinner blade that spins a little over 200 miles an hour. Oh, pretty and fast. It's pretty quick. And there's two teeth here to grab onto the other robot and hopefully rip pieces off. Sounds like you're good to go. Good luck. We'll see you in the round. All right, thank you. From Austin, Texas, Texas Tornado. Texas Tornado in at 176 pounds. He's got a strong flipping arm and a spike that's 24 inches long. From Leland, North Carolina, Black Widow. There's Black Widow in at 220 pounds. The only woman driver in Robot Wars has got a steel spike, cutters, and she's completely invertible. From East Provo, Utah, Unibite. And Unibite 2 with 211 pounds of spinning fury. That disc is supposed to do 172 miles an hour with a flipping arm to boot. Roboteer, stand by. There's the Texas Tornado team and the Black Widow team up in the booth. And there's all three bots poised and ready to pounce. And team duct tape for Unibite. House bots in this round will be shunt with a diamond edge axe. And join and shunt, Sir Killalot, ready to do some damage. Three, two, one, activate. Here we go as RefBot gives the green signal for some major bot bashing. Texas Tornado's in on the action immediately. They're trying to upend Black Widow. The spinning disc of Unibite is getting high-sided by that low-profile design of the Texas Tornado. That disc is grabbing nothing but oxygen. Well, the Texas Tornado's not spinning around much like a tornado, but it definitely looks like it's a control of this battle. As he takes that lifting arm right underneath Unibite, buries him over against the rail, Black Widow is definitely trying to prove wrong any stereotypes against women drivers as they are staying in this battle. They may be staying out of trouble as well. They haven't been taking too many licks from the other bots, but now, He's dancing with death right here at Kilowatt as Kilowatt gets the pincers right down on one of the spots of Black Widow. And Kilowatt doesn't look like there's going to be too much mercy in his mind. Black Widow gets out of trouble. 
Unibike 2 gave a mean lick on Texas Tornado, and I think it's immobilized as RefBot is counting down. If Texas Tornado can't get its button gear, Black Widow and Unibite are gonna definitely go through. Well, there is the devouring of Texas Tornado by Kilowatt, and Sean will probably get in on the action. Oh, the Texas Tornado, too little, too late, I'm afraid. They were already counted out. Something must have got jarred loose on the electronics in there. And now it looks like the house bots are rewriting the rule book and going after Unibite, who's still in it. And it looks to me like Killalot just wants to have a little fun here. But I hope it doesn't just take out Unibite's chances of being effective in the next round. And he lets him go. A little 360 spin just to let him know who's boss. Unibite did not bite the dust, and the Black Widow crawled away. But unfortunately for the Texas Tornado, they got blown away in this qualifying round of Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Let's talk to the team. All right, the Texas Tornado, you guys were looking good, and then I understand you had antenna problems. Tell me how that uh, put your team out of the running. Well, when uh, Unibite went over the top of us, they uh, bent our antenna down, and we lost control of our bot. You claiming it's a cheap shot on the end of uh, No, we had the best of them. It's just they happened to in here, and you're griping about it? I thought it was a, a hard-fought a hard victory. And let me ask you, between the two of you, Black Widow and Unibite, one of you is going to go on to face the Conquering Clown. I would consider it a personal favor if you really kicked their butt for me, okay? I would, too. They kicked my butt last time. Did so, they really? Yeah. Clown? The clown, yeah, last time. Hey, I wouldn't mind. You get teased in school about losing to a clown? Daily. <laughs> now, Black Widow, a uh, very impressive showing out there. Are you looking forward to taking on the clowns or whoever it might be in the next round? I'm looking forward to taking any man on. Woo! Not much I can add to that. Let's give her a really big round of applause. So far through the exit door, Surf Porcelot and Texas Tornado. And those who have to fight it out are Brood and Unibite and Conquering Clown 2 and Black Widow. Well, <laughs> I guess you can mess with Texas after all. Their tornadoes, antenna problems, take it out of the competition, pushing the Black Widow and Unibite into round two. When we come back, two new matchups. Stay tuned. All right, thank you very much. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. The Texas Tornado and Surf Force a lot were blown out of the competition in round one. Let's go to the battle boards and get the round two matchups. All right, Mick, we're going to see Conquering Clown 2 up against Black Widow. But first up, the Brute and Unibite. Down to you, Carol. Very exciting second round. We've got Brute versus Unibite. Unibite, what's your advantage? I think our advantage is this big spinning disc that could possibly rip his tires right off of this robot once it gets up to full speed. Okay, Brute, what do you think about that? I'll just say the other robots he came into contact with were nowhere near as tough as us. Um, we see that he's got plenty of weaknesses we'll take advantage of, and uh, let's do our best. Okay, well, it's going to be exciting. Let's see. Mike, this is Julio, this is Ron, we're Team Vicious, and this is our robot, Brute. Uh, it's a solid steel frame, all welded. We've got a 1,000 RPM, 23-pound spinning drum. Uh, we've got upgraded wheels and hardened axles. It goes about eight miles an hour. It's tough as anything you've ever seen, and we're gonna break some bots. I'm Jerome, this is Chris, and this is Eric. This is our robot, Unibite. With the 29-inch disc and the lifter tail, one bite out of either weapon and the other robot will be dead. Roboteers, stand by. Well, there's Unibite closest to you and Brute in the distance. And the team vicious for Brute with Mike Regan at the controls. 
There's team duct tape for Unibite with 16-year-old Jerome Miles at the controls. And guarding the CPZs will be Sergeant Bash with a flamethrower. And joining him, Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, activate. Well, Brute's wheels are really vulnerable to some spinning action, which is what Unibite is all about. So if they know any better, they're going to stay away from that disc. But look at the drum on Brute. He's just going in after Unibite, totally putting Unibite on the defensive. Unibite spinning around in disbelief. And the Brute came in with that drum, and now it's in there with a spike. Totally discombobulated the spinning disc. I think what happened was the Brute went in there with that drum and bent that disc so the tooth doesn't have clearance through the chassis of Unibite. Unibite's only got that lifting arm left, and it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of speed to use it. Meanwhile, Mike Regan at the controls for Brute is certainly running circles around its opposition. Brute's got the power of pushing. The grinders are going. A Unibite better come up with something real quick, or else they're going to be bot fodder. There's the drama Brute getting going again. Seems to me Unibite's pretty well protected from the sides, so the strategy would be to get into it with that spike if he can. He's already done damage to Unibite's spinning disc as Sergeant Bash gets out of the corner patrol zone, and Unibite, with a bit of strategy on its own, goes into the pit trigger. They better hope for a miracle here. They haven't exhibited so much pushing power, but if they can trick the Brute into the pit, it'd be the Brute down the chute, and that'd be all she wrote. Yeah, interestingly enough, it looks like Unibite is hanging around in front of the pit as well, hoping maybe Brute will just kind of cruise by and uh, fall by the wayside. Oh, no! Look at that! The Brute takes himself out! Unbelievable! Wow, just as I said it, they did it! I better keep my mouth shut in the future, but Unibite is loving this. Look at that, hanging around the edge, and goodbye, down the chute. Cease. All right, well, with all the weapons shot, it was a battle of strategy, and it seems like Unibite used the better strategy, Brute, going into the pit. We're going to talk to all the contestants and see what went down. Okay, now, guys, uh, you got to be feeling pretty miserable right now. You nullified yeah. their weaponry, you were the aggressors, and then you kind of uh, got over-aggressive, and uh, we saw what happened. Uh, well, we're running different radio frequencies. We had a little trouble over near the pit. Drift a little, you know. Just put me out of my misery now, man. All right, but I saw you. You looked really upset ah. there. I kind of uh, got a kick out of that, but you did a good job. You guys kind of pulled one out, a strategic <laughs> victory, yeah. I guess. The best thing you could have possibly done is hit that pit button. Is that correct? That's the best thing we could have done. Once both our weapons were taken out, we knew that was the only way. So we, we, we hit the button, and we tried to drive back and forth the front of it and see if he'd miss. And see if this guy would be dumb enough to yeah. try to ram you and miss. And uh, apparently... You were. So uh, thank goodness, because it was looking like a judge's decision, and I think it would have gone to Brute, but yeah, you guys, with the strategy, the technology, the guts, the fortitude, you pulled it out. You all did a great job. Well, pretty good. <laughs> Let's hear it for all the Roboteers. So there it is. Brute commits roboticide as Unibite goes through to the finals to meet either Conquering Clown or the Black Widow. Oh, guys, that was tough. Well, you know, I'll say even some of the best robots out there drive into the pit. This was just another example of that happening. We were clearly the better bot, and uh, we tore them up. It's, you know, it was a clear victory. If we had just stayed yeah. away from the pit, we would have won. Brute lived up to his name, pummeling Unibite, but he was overwhelmed by his own aggression and <laughs> drove himself right into the pit. <laughs> oh, whew. Anyway. Unibite wins the match and gets a free ride to tonight's finals. Is Unibite a contender or a pretender? When we come back, the conquering clown takes on the Black Widow. Don't go away. Yes. Thank you.
you. Thank you. Stop booing me, kid. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Tonight's winner will gain a spot in the Extreme Warriors Championship Show. Unibite has gone all the way into the final matchup, and we're about to find out who's going to join it. Let's go to the battle boards for the next matchup. All right, Mick, we're going to see Conquering Clown 2 up against Black Widow, who are with Carol. Down in the pits, ready for round two. I've got the Black Widow versus the Conquering Clown 2. Black Widow, how do you feel about the competition? They're just a bunch of clowns. So you're not taking them too seriously? Nah. What do you feel is your advantage? I've got an awesome robot. It's lethal, and I'm the Black Widow, and I'm not scared of any clowns. Wow, that's some pretty tough words for you. Well, they better take it serious, because they got big tires, and we got a good big blade. Plus, we got a butterfly and another secret weapon. The butterfly being the first secret weapon, and this is secret weapon this number is two? This secret weapon number two. Well, you know what? As long as you don't go up in smoke, I think you'll be just fine. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> There's and Conquering mine. Clown. And Team Conquering Clown, and your resemblance to Grateful Dead fans, purely coincidental. And there's Black Widow with Team TSR up in the booth. And Tanya Bingham at the controls. The house spots in this round will be the ever capable Sir Kilowatt. Joining him will be Sergeant Bash, who's packing heat. Three, two, one, activate. Well, let's see if Conquering Clown can squeak through again. The Black Widow is looking to put a hefty fight on the Clown. The Clown with that spinning blade, a real one-hit wonder, at least in the last round, put it out of commission after the first uh, contact. Black Widow did not take too much damage on with that blade as Kilowatt comes out to break him up. Black Widow's got plenty of mobility here, but the clown has got Black Widow pinned up against the rails and into the corner patrol zone where Bash is going to heat up the clown. Oh, another melting concrete clown. They should have put Asbestos hair on that thing because he is torched. The Conquering Clown has been conquered, but not by who you thought. Black Widow was just an innocent bystander as Bash came in there and torched him. Got a real lobotomy there. And Clown, just for an added bit of strategy, goes in and hits the arena disc of doom trigger. That ought to spin somebody out, but it looks like the Clown has got worse problems as Kilowatt's got him with the jaws of death. He's got him by the spinning blade, and he gets away and loses a bit of hairpiece. Well, there's nothing but a shrunken head left on the top of that conquering clown, but he's still got enough power to do a little fighting as he backs into Refbot. Seems like he's got no sense of direction whatsoever, but he goes after Black Widow, who's right over and inverted. Somebody split Black Widow. We didn't see it, but he's back upside down now. That spike's got an extra six inches of clearance, but now Conquering Clown flips it back over again. Believe it or no, Conquering Clown's got a burnt head somewhere around the arena. He still seems to be dishing out most of the punishment in this round. If they're both alive after this 10-second clock goes down, it'll go to the judges. Conquering Clown's been on the offense all the way through this thing as it pushes Black Widow into the spinning disc. Cease. Tanya Bingham has definitely met her match this time for Black Widow. As we get a look at the chart remains a conquering clown, the judges are going to have to put their heads together on this one. And well, they do. Let's take a look at some of the action from that last round. Conquering Clown was in there with that spinning blade. Black Widow really stopped the effectiveness of it, but Bash came in with the heater and torched the clown. He burned up real good. 
But Black Widow wasn't over yet. Black Widow had a little date with a arena disc there and uh, ripped him a new underbelly. All right, it was a close contest. It looked like the clown got torched, but by unanimous decision, unfortunately, Widow, they're going with the conquering clowns. Now, you yeah. mentioned... You mentioned uh, the last episode that uh, you were ready to take on any man, right? Apparently, you were not ready to take on any clown. Oh, well, that's right, but I'll be back. Not You'll be problem. back? With a better box. All right, better box. than ever. Okay, Robot. with a better box. Okay. <laughs> now, guys, I've mentioned on occasion that I'm scared of you. I told someone backstage I hated your guts, but I'll be honest. Until that clown caught on fire, I never realized just how much I cared about the conquering clown. Oh! All right, all right, listen. No hugs, no horns, okay? That's the only ground rules up here. You guys look bad for a second. The clown caught on fire kind of looked like Matt Michael Jackson on a bad day, but you had the guts and the intestinal fortitude to kind of come back. How do you feel uh, your chances are with Unibite in the finals? I think we'll do all right. We got a new blade, and we we'll get that head fixed, and I think we're ready to go. Could I keep that uh, old head as a souvenir of my affection for you guys? I think I think we'll all do right. that. We'll all right, all right. Let's hear it for all these roboteers. Yeah. Well, as Brood and Black Widow get reduced to rubble, the final is Unibite Two up against Conquering Clown Two. The Conquering Clown takes on Unibite in tonight's final battle when we come back. Thank you. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. And then there were two. Unibite and the Clown waged war on the other contenders and came out on top. Now only one can go home a winner, but there's been a lot of exciting action so far. Before we get to the final battle, let's see how we got here. All right, Mick, we started out with six bots, Black Widow, Texas Tornado, and Unibite. But the first battle we saw was Conquer and Clown 2, The Brute, and Sir Force a lot. Sir Force a lot looked like it had all the weaponry, but it was really the clown that did all the damage. With that spinning blade, he only got one shot out of it, but he made the most, that's for sure. And Sir Force a lot went to pieces. But it wasn't over yet. Sir Force a lot had a little plan up his sleeve as well. Trying to take out the clown. Those five blade spinning camshafts took out the spinner of the clown. And then the brute wanted to get in on the action. All of these bots were spinners in different ways, some vertical, some horizontal. But it had to go down to a judge's decision to separate them. And they decided Sir Force a lot should get forced out. So much for building a robot in five days. We were robbed, trashed. So as Sir Force a lot was the first victim, the next battle we saw was Black Widow, Texas Tornado, and Unibite. So right out of the blocks, Texas Tornado was taking that low profile design right underneath Unibite. Unibite with that spinning disc was a danger to the, all the other bots. And Black Widow, small as she was, got in on the action as well. Unibite needed to do something to stay into this battle. Because Black Widow and Texas Tornado were doing all the damaging. And Killalot, for that matter, who came out of his corner patrol zone, making up his own rules, came after Black Widow. And Black Widow certainly got out of trouble as quick as she could. But then, somebody hit Texas Tornado so hard that it knocked the electronics loose and it was immobilized. Killalot didn't care. It went after Unibite after the whole thing was over. If we hadn't have lost our antenna, we would have been fine. Two bots were out with nothing but excuses, which left four. And those four were Conquering Clown 2 up against Black Widow, but first we saw Brood and Unibite. Brood and its stocky little stature used its drum off the front to bend the 172 mile an hour disc off a of Unibite. Unibite's weapon was rendered useless after that, and it was just all about a pushing game. As Brood and Unibite took it out to the middle of the arena, Brood had some plans, but Unibite had some plans of its own. It went into the pit trigger. The audience was baying for some pit action. 
Brute for sure had the upper hand, we thought. So this little driving error. All I can say is hoops. Not the way we wanted to go out. But out they went, which meant Unibite went into the finals to meet either Conquering Clown or Black Widow. After a quick pit stop, Conquering Clown's blade got restored back and almost taken out again by Black Widow. The sparks were flying off of Black Widow as Conquering Clown's blade got immobilized just briefly. Conquering Clown put Black Widow up against the rails, but Bash was trying to sneak in the back door and ordered one clown extra crispy. But that wasn't enough to stop the Conquering Clown. They may have been headless, but they still had a bot. Conquering Clown did as well as it could, considering it didn't have a head. Going after Black Widow in a serious way. Black Widow, could, all it could do is back out of trouble as much as possible. But in the end, they were still going, and it was down to a judge's decision. Cease. We had a good match, but it could go either way. Never underestimate the Black Widow. Well, possibly the uh, Black Widow overestimated, because they are out of there. Which brings us to the final. Unibite 2 up against Conquering Clown 2. After the break, we have Conquering Clowns and Unibite ready to battle it out for a place in the grand finale. So keep watching Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. We're back with Robot Wars. These are the finals. Conquering Clown and Unibite are ready to tear each other apart for a spot in the championship. Please stop fooling me. So the final is Unibite 2 up against Conquering Clown 2, who are in the pitch with Carol. The pressure's mounting down here in the pits. We're getting down to the last battle of the evening. I've got the Clowns versus the Unibite. Whoever wins this, goes on to the grand finale and competes for the U.S. Championship. Unibite, you incurred a lot of damage going up against Fruit earlier. The repairs look great. You ready to go? We're ready to go. Have any last-minute jitters, nerves? We're getting a little nervous. I'm accidentally staring into the eyes of the clown and get, like, psyched out. And, uh... All right, clowns. Is that funny to you? Oh, yeah. We got the iron mask on there this time. We didn't want to bring it out, but we had to. Okay. Well, sounds like it's do or die. We wish these teams luck. Let's go. From Silvis, Illinois, Conquering Clown. From East Provo, Utah, Unibite. Roboteers, stand by. And there's Mike Flanagan with a team, Conquering Clown. And Sharon Miles with the controls for Unibite. Tonight in this final, we've got a new hazard, a drop zone, with a washer machine at 60 feet above the arena floor. The house spot chaperoning this final will be shut. Joined by the capable pincers of Sir Kilvalai. Three, two, one, activate. I bet you never wanted to test your washing machine like that. Conquering Clown immediately on evasive action with a new facelift and another hairpiece, it looks like, or what's left of the old one. Conquering Clown in there with a spinning blade. And Unibite, with its little facelift, got its blade working again as well. Wow, if either one of these blades connect with each other, that's got to be quite a force. Conquering Clown sizing up the opposition. And Unibite doesn't seem to have a whole lot of power coming off that wheel. They need to get up to speed before they drive into the side of the Clown. And into the Clown they go. It looks to me like Unibite has already done some damage. It's taken that spinning disc into the side of the wheel guard of Conquering Clown and pinned the wheel. So basically Conquering Clown can go only in one direction. Unibite goes in for the kill, or what seems like the kill. Poor Conquering Clown didn't expect that, I'm sure. And now they're gonna try to take some licks out on Unibite. 
Unified has a much stronger chassis, and that blade on Conqueror Clown is doing nothing. Or is it? Wait a second, Unified is not moving. A little help from Shunt. There's definitely no motor power left in Unified. I think that last dig with Conquering Clown's steel blade actually did some real damage as Shunt lines Unified up on the flipper as a countdown. The audience is counting with it. This bot is history. Unibite in an upset. Definitely had the upper hand and gets flipped over to the middle. Kill a lot comes in for the kill. Look, a little bit of airtime off a of Unibite just to add insult to injury. Now, since he's immobilized and the audience is chanting for drop, that means the house bots are going to come in and utilize the newest arena feature, the drop zone, where we drop an undisclosed weight from the center of the arena right down onto the X mark in the spot. Today, it's a washing machine. Oh! <laughs> Unipite is not happy with its wash today as this washing machine comes crashing down into Unibyte's smashed up reality. Look at that, it's a robot compactor. Cease. All right, well what about that washing machine? Conquering Clowns moving on, they are today's champion. Unfortunately for Unibyte, they fell victim not only to the clown, but to the drop zone here on Robot Wars. Sometimes when a performer is at their absolute best, we refer to that as being in the zone. And today, may I say that you were in the zone. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the zone you were in was the drop zone, as we yeah. saw that big washing machine come down upon your robot. How's that feel? I don't know. It's kind of confusing me right now. I don't know what to think about a washing machine falling on my robot. And how, many, how, many, how long did you spend perfecting this robot? About a month. And then to see it crushed in a matter of seconds? while the fans chant their approval. I liked it. Okay. <laughs> Clowns, congratulations. I know the ground rules before for us to be here together was no hugs and no horns. But seeing as you are today's champion, don't get me wrong, no hugging. Hugging's still oh, out, okay. but you can, you can blow oh, the yeah. stupid horns there for a little bit. All right, that's enough, that's enough. Hey, uh, you crush, are you trying to do the worst high five in entertainment history? Because <laughs> if you are, you're being successful. Listen, that's it for this episode of Robot Wars. Until next time, fight on. Next time on Robot Wars, we'll see the revolutionist, Traxilla and the Gap, and Propellerhead, Snookums, and Psycho Chicken.